Hello everyone! Now is a great time of the year to start a garden and if you're new to gardening you probably have a lot of questions you'd like answered. In this video I'll answer five of the most frequently asked newbie questions. First question, should I grow in a raised garden bed or directly in the soil? So to answer that let's talk about the quality of your existing garden soil and the benefits of using a raised garden bed. The biggest advantage to growing in a raised garden bed is that you get to control the soil mix you are growing in. If you have rocky soil or heavy clay soil in your area no problem. Because you don't fill the bed with that soil you fill it with a mixture of ingredients that will provide the nutrition and right environment for your plants. And because you're providing a rich environment for your plants to grow in, you can grow more plants in a smaller space. And because it is a smaller space, you can maintain it more easily in terms of weeding, watering, pruning, and just enjoying the fruits of your labor. Can you grow in the ground itself? Yes, of course you can. You will need to clear an area and then till the ground or turn it over to loosen the existing soil. And since you're using the existing soil in your ground, you might want to have it tested. If you have sandy or silty soil, then you'll need to add some compost and peat moss to improve the soil structure and to add some extra nutrients to the soil. If you have lead, pesticides, or any other contaminants in your soil, I would opt for a raised garden bed. You also want to know the pH of your soil. A pH of 7 is neutral and a pH range of between 5.5 and 7 is considered good for plant growth. If your pH is below 5.5 then your soil is too acidic. This can be amended by adding limestone to the soil. If your pH is above 7 then your soil is alkaline in which case you can add sulfur to the soil to lower the pH. You can have your soil tested at your local extension office for free or for a small fee. Many universities offer this service. You can see here is the website for Cornell University. They offer a soil test for $5 and it takes about a week to get the results. So this is why many gardeners choose to grow in a raised garden bed. You get to fill it with your own soil mixture so you can control what your plants are growing in. All right, let's move on to the next question, question number two. Now let's suppose you decide to start with a raised garden bed for the reasons just mentioned. How big a bed should you start with? There is a standard rule that is followed by most raised bed gardeners, and that is never make a garden bed more than four feet wide. The length doesn't matter, but the width should never be more than four feet. Why? Because the average reach of an adult arm is about two feet. So if you want to be able to reach into your garden bed to prune or weed or harvest, you need to be able to get your arm in there. If you can reach two feet, then from either side of the bed you'll be able to get at whatever you're trying to reach. But if the bed is wider than four feet, then you're going to have a problem reaching into the middle no matter where you stand. Unless of course you climb into the bed, which is a no-no. Standing in the bed compacts the soil and is not good for the roots of your growing plants. If you have a shorter arm reach than two feet, then consider building a three foot bed instead. All right, so three or four feet wide by what? Well, that's up to you. If you really want to start small, then start with a four foot by four foot area, and that will give you a 16 square foot area to grow in, which allows for either 16 large plants or more if they're smaller plants. In a 16 foot area you can grow four tomato plants, four pepper plants, four cucumber plants, and four eggplants for example. The cucumbers and eggplants will need to be trellised so that you can grow vertically instead of letting them spread out over the ground. Next question, question three. What materials can you make the bed out of? There are many alternatives for this as long as the materials are food grade or food safe. You don't want to use anything that has been treated with chemicals or materials that can leach harmful substances into your soil. See this bed over here? I bought this on the internet and when it came it had a sticker with a reproductive health warning for the state of California. I'm not in California but I know they have something called Proposition 65. I don't know much about it 
So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use the bed for flowers instead of vegetables. The most natural material you can build your bed out of is probably wood. Untreated wood is best. Here you can see our raised garden bed that we made very easily using planter blocks. The wood planks just slip into the planter blocks. The hardest part is cutting the wood to size. We went to Home Depot and they cut the wood for us. We added another two beds this year during the coronavirus pandemic. And even during the worst time of the pandemic, there was a friendly Home Depot worker happy to cut the wood for us. I guess Home Depot workers are considered essential workers. So that's one alternative. You can watch how we constructed that bed. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. For people who are more handy with tools or do-it-yourselfers, there are videos on YouTube that show you how to construct a raised garden bed by hammering the sides together. Not hard, but harder than just slipping them into planter blocks. I've even seen do-it-yourself videos using pallets to make raised garden beds and even concrete blocks. There are many possibilities. These beds are galvanized steel. I paid around $50 each for these beds, so definitely the wood bed with the planter blocks is a better deal for your money. Both the wood beds and the steel beds are easy to put together, although because the steel beds are smaller, they can be assembled by just one person. The wood beds have eight foot long planks of wood, and I needed help carrying that from the car to the backyard and putting it together. None of these beds have bottoms, which may not be obvious if you're new to raised bed gardening. They're meant to be placed on the ground, and that becomes the bottom. If you have a problem with animals burrowing underground, like gophers, then you should lay some chicken wire down on the bottom of the bed before filling it with your soil mixture. Some people lay down a weed block fabric as the bottom layer. We laid down an initial layer of cardboard boxes to help kill the grass underneath. And then on top of that, we filled the beds with a mixture of peat moss, vermiculite, and compost, as suggested by many, including Mel Bartholomew in his book on square foot gardening. Can you have a raised bed on your deck? Well, the problem, of course, is the bottom. You would need to construct some sort of bottom for the bed. Or you can try these beds made from fabric. It's similar to growing in grow bags, but it's configured like a garden bed. This is perfect for a deck since it has a bottom. I put a plastic disposable tablecloth underneath mine to protect the wood of the deck. Obviously this is small, but it's a nice and simple way to start a garden. Or to extend your garden. Next question, what should I fill my beds with? You may have noticed these beds are about 12 inches high, and you may be wondering how much soil you need to fill these beds. According to Mel Bartholomew, most plants only need about 6 inches of soil as long as the soil is rich with the proper nutrients. These beds are 12 inches high, but you can see I only filled them about 6 or 8 inches, but I filled them with a very rich mixture, plus I added worm castings to each of my planting holes to help feed the plants and give them a healthy start. If you're planting root vegetables, you'll want to fill the beds with 10 or 12 inches of soil. If you want to fill your beds higher, you can throw in some garden debris like wood sticks and dried leaves as a bottom layer and then fill the next layer with peat moss, vermiculite, and compost mixture. Next question, where should you locate your raised garden beds? I have mine in the only area of my yard that is full sun and the ground is pretty level here. Shade is okay for part of the day, but your beds should get at least six to eight hours of full sun during the day. Speaking of shade, you usually don't want your taller crops shading out your smaller ones. Unless they are not heat tolerant, then you do want them to provide shade. Typical crops that are not heat tolerant are lettuce and peas, and they're often referred to as cool weather crops. These are planted in early spring or fall, but heat-loving plants such as tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, eggplant, melons, the list goes on and on, these plants love the sun and the heat. When you plant these sun-loving plants, make sure you plant the taller ones on the north side of your garden and the shorter crops on the southern side if you can. This way, as the sun moves across the sky, at least in the northern hemisphere, it casts its rays from the south and the shadow falls northward. 
having the taller plants at the northern end would cause them to cast their shadow to the north, leaving the shorter plants to soak up the rays of the sun. If you're growing pole beans, then those would be your tallest plants, and they would need to be at the northern end of your garden. Your cucumbers, if trellised, would also grow tall and need to be on the northern side of your garden if you can. Back to a point I made earlier, and the best advice I can give you, if this is truly your first gardening experience and you're feeling unsure of how to go about it, then start small. Start with a 4 foot by 4 foot raised garden bed, or at most 4 feet by 8 feet, and plant vegetables that you and your family love to eat. Because you're starting small, you'll have the greatest chance of success and you'll be motivated to grow a bigger garden next year. I hope this video has helped you to get started with your garden. I wish you a bountiful harvest. Thank you for watching. Bye!